armaments of the Necron. The Necron were the most technologically advanced species in the galaxy, existing millions and millions of years prior to the Imperium of Mankind. Their technology was great enough that they could blink across the cosmos, devour entire systems with generated black holes, and snuff out stars with the press of a button. They were great enough to overthrow the Old Ones, and managed to shatter the godlike Catan into shards, which they then captured and harnessed. Of course, this wasn't without a cost, and they decided to go into a great sleep rather than take on the up-and-coming Eldar, waiting for a time when they could reclaim their mantle as the greatest force in the galaxy. Recently, that time has seemed to occur, as the Necron have been awakening, still possessing much of their ancient technology. Let's take a look at their weapons of war that they are now using against the unsuspecting factions of the 41st millennium. Let's start by taking a look at close quarters weaponry, a category that is largely reserved for the more elite troops within a Necron army. Crazed and twisted Necron warriors known as Flayed Ones exclusively fight in close quarters, but their weapons are razor claws that extend from their fingertips. Similarly, the Necron Wraith is a serpentine entity that floats through the battlefield, phasing in and out of existence before striking with bladed fingers. The standard Necron Warrior does possess a form of bayonet or axe on their Gauss rifles, but the killing potential of these pales in comparison to firing the rifle itself. Higher ranking troops, including Lich Guards, Lords, and Overlords, will often bring a variety of extremely deadly melee weapons into battle, however. The War Scythe is one of the most potent, created from the same living metal that makes up the Necron's bodies, and bearing an entropic field generator, which allows it to carve through practically any material in existence. These weapons are also nearly impossible to destroy, surviving direct hits from LAS cannons, even if their wielder does not. Similarly, Necrons possess a number of different hyperphase weapons, including the hyperphase sword, harvester, and reap blade. These weapons all vibrate across dimensions, allowing them to completely phase through enemy armor, striking at the flesh beneath directly. The most numerous close quarters threat in the Necron army are the Canoptic Scarabs, small metal creatures resembling insects that are capable of consuming nearly any material in existence and converting it into energy. The Necrons then use this energy to fabricate the rest of their technology and equipment. Scarabs typically function in large swarms as mindless feeding machines, rushing over everything in sight and consuming it piece by piece. Given enough time, a swarm of scarabs can easily consume an entire hive city and everyone in it, using the energy consumed to massively supplement the Necron's army. Individually, they pose relatively little threat, but they are almost never encountered alone, and thousands of scarabs can quickly swarm over a tank or fortification and burrow their way in, turning it swiftly into a tomb. Necrons also possess a number of larger constructs that are even more devastating in close quarters, including the Canoptic Spiders, the Tomb Stalkers, and the Tomb Sentinels. These entities are easily able to single-handedly rip apart enemy tanks and fortifications with horrific speed. Moving on to ranged weaponry, the Necrons possess a form of technology that no other faction does, that being Gauss weaponry. Gauss technology functions by firing directed energy at a target, which proceeds to shear apart the atomic bonds between molecules. Regardless of the target then, organic or inorganic, and no matter what it's constructed from, the Gauss weapon will tear it apart, magnetically drawing the constituent atoms towards the weapon. Against armor and fortifications, this causes a certain amount of it to simply be disintegrated, but against flesh and bone, it causes a flaying effect, stripping away each layer of skin and muscle until nothing remains. 
If the Gauss energy hits a relatively minor location on a body, the damage will still be catastrophic, but potentially livable, while anything close to a major organ will almost certainly result in a swift, agonizing death. The Adeptus Mechanicus has spent a good deal of time attempting to replicate Gauss weaponry, as it's certainly the most potent form of arms on the battlefield at this point, but they've yet to come close. As far as they understand it, the Necron's weaponry should be a mathematical impossibility due to the massive amount of energy involved, contained in such a small form, that should by all accounts simply rip the weapon and wielder apart upon being fired. The most basic form of Gauss weapon is the Gauss Flayer, wielded by every single Necron warrior, and just as capable as any other Gauss weapon of tearing apart flesh and armor in equal measure. While these weapons are of course extremely devastating, especially in mass, they are not unstoppable. Primarily, the effect of disintegrating armor is not instantaneous, and sufficient amounts of armor plating can take longer to chew through, requiring multiple shots. Against an unprepared and under-armored opposing force, however, a group of Necron warriors armed with their most basic weapons can truly be horrific. Gauss blasters are the next step up, being heavier and possessing two barrels instead of one, allowing for even more powerful bursts of energy, swiftly able to tear through infantry and light vehicles. These are the common weapons of the Necron Immortals, the elite soldiers of the Necron armies. Gauss cannons are even larger, possessing four barrels, capable of ripping through a space marine's armor quickly and easily. These are the typical weapons of Necron Destroyers, crazed soldiers that take to continually augment their physical forms to make themselves more devastating on the battlefield. Going even further, a heavy Gauss cannon goes back to only having one barrel, sacrificing rapid firing rate for greater power. These are akin to Imperial Laz cannons in size, wielded by Necron Heavy Destroyers, and are capable of ripping apart even the heaviest of battle tanks. Somewhat similar are Gauss Flux Arcs, consisting of three Gauss flares linked together and featuring a single barrel, generally mounted onto the sides of Necron monoliths. These weapons are used either defensively, to vaporize any would-be attackers approaching the monolith, or offensively, scouring the area of life while moving into enemy lines. Even larger Gauss weapons, including the Gauss Annihilator and Obliterator, are capable of vaporizing their way through Titan armor with ease, or ripping apart entire squads of heavily armored space marines. Another category of weapons that certain Necrons will utilize are particle weapons, which function by emitting a stream of antimatter particles, detonating on contact with normal matter. Known for being extremely reliable and requiring far less energy than the Gauss weapons, the simplest of these is the Particle Caster, a pistol-sized weapon used by Triarch Praetorians and Canoptic Wraiths. Particle Beamers are the rifle-sized versions, Particle Shredders are the heavy anti-tank versions, and Particle Whips are much larger, in the form of a glowing power matrix crystal located on the tops of monoliths. When fired, the whip will unleash devastating arcs of antimatter lightning, splitting the air with a cracking sound and vaporizing tanks and infantry alike in a large area around the monolith. Some Necron starships have also been fitted with extremely large versions of the particle whips for ship-to-ship -ship combat. There are also Tesla weapons, which utilize arcs of lightning that jump from foe to foe, charring them with immense heat and growing more powerful with each arc. Versions of Tesla weapons range from the rifle-sized carbines to the large-scale destructors. Other interesting weapons include the Tachyon Arrow, a wrist-mounted device that transmutes a sliver of metal into an unstoppable bolt, capable of near-infinite range and of penetrating practically any substance, including going straight through Imperial Titans. The Necron's Deathmark snipers utilize synaptic disintegrators, which fire compressed leptonic beams of subatomic particles, capable of utterly destroying neural and synaptic tissue, 
leaving their victims mindless husks. The transdimensional beamer and exile cannon function by banishing materials to a pocket dimension outside of the normal time-space continuum, whether it be unwanted debris or an unfortunate opponent. Potentially the most powerful weapon the Necrons possess is the Celestial Orrery, a device that projects a representation of the entire galaxy. Not just an impressive display, however, the Orrery is somehow linked to the galaxy, to a degree that if one of the stars on the device is snuffed out, the actual star will go supernova. While this degree of power is unparalleled amongst any of the other factions, Doing so upsets the fundamental forces of creation, setting off a catastrophic chain reaction that's only fixed with thousands of years of constant micromanagement afterwards. Largely then, the orrery is used as a surveillance device, allowing the Necrons to observe the entire galaxy and all of the events taking place within it, although the Oriskar dynasty that watches over the device use it sparingly, mostly forced to protect it from others that would use it without care. Moving on to discussing the various vehicles and constructs the Necrons possess, their standard attack crafts are called Tomb Blades. These were originally designed as Void Fighters, but since the Necrons' robotic bodies aren't affected by the vacuum of space, the canopies were stripped away for a more open design. Tomb Blades are capable of operating both in space and in atmosphere, where they hover across the battlefield, zipping around in corkscrew motions to avoid enemy fire. No normal pilot could ever hope to handle the motions of a tomb blade, but again, the Necrons aren't bothered, and since the average Necron warrior wouldn't make for a great pilot, the movements are actually controlled by a series of hyperfractal equations. The result is an extremely unpredictable, fast, and dangerous vehicle, especially in large numbers each armed with twin-linked Tesla carbines or Gauss blasters. Moving up in size, the Annihilation Barge is a light anti-personnel skimmer equipped with a twin-linked Tesla Destructor, capable of unleashing devastating arcs of lightning across enemy infantry. The Annihilation Barge's drawback is its low speed, so these are often kept in defensive positions to put a stop to any infantry assaults. A similar design is the Catacomb Command Barge, armed with a Tesla cannon, which is primarily used by Necron Lords and Overlords as their personal transport across the battlefield. The standard troop transport vehicle for the rest of the army is the Ghost Ark, capable of carrying up to 10 troops, as well as possessing the means to repair Necron soldiers, even if they're too damaged to repair themselves. Those that are too damaged for even the Ghost Arcs to repair are of course broken down into raw energy to be reused elsewhere. Since the Ghost Arcs are also capable of void flight, they serve as boarding craft and landing shuttles as well, and are armed with two Gauss Flare arrays for support. The Necron's heavy assault vehicle is of similar design to the Ghost Arc, known as the Doomsday Arc, but it sacrifices the carrying capacity for a single massive Doomsday Cannon. The cannon is among the most powerful weapons the Necrons possess, capable of destroying pretty much anything instantly outside of perhaps a titan. The Necron Monolith is perhaps the most important and most useful of the vehicles possessed by the Necron, since not only does its Gauss flux arc projectors and particle whip allow it to easily clear the surrounding area of hostiles, the portals located in the middle of the monoliths are key to Necrons overwhelming a battlefield. These portals are captured wormholes that are linked to Necron tomb worlds and warships, allowing Necron soldiers to instantaneously arrive onto a battlefield in mass. In a very short period of time, a number of monoliths can arrive at a battle, and hordes of Necrons can sweep out, each armed with the greatest weaponry known to the galaxy. The Doomsday Monolith is an even more dangerous version, armed with a Gauss Obliterator, and the Megalith is an even more massive mobile fortress, capable of holding multiple monoliths inside of it. 
The obelisks are similar in design to monoliths, but are designed to suddenly emerge in the presence of enemy aircraft, blasting them out of the sky with Tesla spheres, or simply pulling them down with gravitic pulses. Weapon emplacements include the Necron Pylon, capable of emerging from the ground to attack trespassers and armed with particle accelerators, gauss flux arcs, or gauss annihilators. For aircraft, they have some fighters, the Doom Scythe and Night Scythe, the latter of which also functions as a troop delivery mechanism thanks to its integrated wormhole, and is armed with twin-linked Tesla destructors. The Doom Scythe eschews the wormhole for a death ray, and is piloted by an integrated android brain capable of simulating billions of possible strategies in the span of a few nanoseconds. The Night Shroud is the Necron Bomber aircraft, which drops death spheres across a battlefield, a relic from the days of the war in heaven containing a fragment of antimatter. Their void ships include various light cruisers, armed with arrays of lightning arc turrets and particle whip batteries, while their largest vessels are known as Karn class tomb ships, although there don't appear to be many of these in existence. The tomb ships are more than strong enough to take out an Imperial battleship, armed with lightning arcs, particle whips, energy drain generators, and a weapon known as the Sepulchre, capable of generating a psychic wave against an enemy ship that drives its crew to madness. In addition to all these, the Necrons also possess a number of unmanned constructs, including the aforementioned Scarabs, Tomb Stalkers, and Tomb Sentinels. Canoptic Doomstalkers are large automated walkers armed with a large Doomsday Blaster, as well as twin Gauss Flayers for anything that gets too close. Canoptic Reanimators, on the other hand, are support machines capable of emitting nano scarabs across the battlefield to repair damaged Necron soldiers and constructs, as well as tear apart any unfortunate enemies in the area. Similarly, Canoptic Spiders can quickly repair any damage to the Necron army, as well as controlling a small army of scarabs, and are often used to patrol Necron tombs for any intruders. Also found in tombs are Wraiths, large serpentine constructs armed with a dimensional destabilization matrix which allows it to skip in and out of reality. While this was originally designed to allow it to reach into solid machinery for repairs, it's just as capable of using it to phase its claws and tendrils into flesh, phasing them back in to sever arteries and other vital organs. All of this isn't even going into the Catan, of which the Necrons possess certain shards of their former selves, able to be unleashed onto a battlefield. Although these shards are just a mere fragment of the power that the Catan used to possess, it's still enough to devastate an entire battlefield, potentially including the Necrons. Catan shards can generate antimatter, disintegrate armor and flesh alike, disrupt gravity and matter, and erase foes from space and time. These, of course, are used sparingly by the Necrons, and are contained in Tesseract vaults until unleashed, but they're among the most potent forces the Necrons possess. Possessing the most potent technology in the galaxy, with much of it completely beyond the Imperium's grasp of understanding, it's a bit of a wonder that the Necrons haven't reclaimed their place yet as the reigning power. By all accounts, they very well might at some point in the relative near future, but their main issue right now is their numbers. Although there are trillions of Necrons, each one as dangerous as the last, the grand majority of them are still asleep on their tomb worlds, and many of the awake ones are not united in force. Of course, narratively, no faction will ever win in Warhammer 40k, just like Superman will never stay dead, but the Necrons certainly put up an impressive showing when just looking at their weaponry. Getting hit with an Imperial Lasgun or Flamer is probably pretty rough, but it's hard to compete with something that atomically flays you layer by layer. 